the three of you approach Hieronymus's office. This is your first time making it to the top of the school. All three of you make a perception check. I thought you were going to make us roll athletics for like all of the many, many stairs. That's up to you that guys. Are... Yeah, you can decide uh, how uh, winded you are. Ooh, that's really good. Uh, 24. Uh, that's a 18. 19 plus 3, 22. Uh, you guys percept Jeez. the hell out of some stuff. Um, so first, you see that the door is hanging off of its hinges. Not that it's been damaged, but rather that the door frame has warped and twisted and the door simply no longer fits. Second, you are being hit by waves of pure, white-hot rage. They're not directed at you. They're simply radiating out from where you are approaching. And the force of will behind them is such that you can see them make visible ripples in the air. And just as you realize this, you hear a roar, and it says, You! And all three of you make a strength saving throw. Wow! We are throwing. Oh, baby. That's a 16 plus 7, 23. Um, 19 plus... W- wicked. One, Fuck. 20. Dirty 20. Um, Also good juice, right? Justin also did good. A 19 plus 2, 21. The three of you feel a pull towards the room. Uh, but you're able to resist it by bracing your feet and grabbing the walls. But clearly, Gray wants to talk to you just about as much as you want to talk to him. Okay. I knock tenderly on the bad door. The door doesn't take much. It's barely on there. And so you knock and it falls inwards, revealing the room that was formerly Hieronymus's office has now been corrupted by decades of Gray's presence. It's as much like his hell dimension as the dimension itself. However, it is also, in a word, trashed. Not what you would expect from the power of a demon prince. More like what you would see from a petulant teenager throwing a tantrum. There's destruction everywhere. And in the space below the ceiling, the ceiling is much higher than it should be. You see swirling debris, rocks, chunks of furniture, bits of stone from the walls all swirling like a slow, angry tornado. And in the center of the destruction is Gray. Gone is any resemblance to Hieronymus. He towers over the three of you, his wet, slate-patterned skin pulled tight over unnatural muscles. His horns twist and turn back on themselves. Long, obsidian talons flex at the end of disturbingly thin fingers. And one more thing. His eyes are filled with hatred and they are focused on you, Fitzroy. And he says, You did this, you hypocrite! What did I... I just got here. I just came up the stairs. What did I... What could I possibly have done? Make a dexterity saving throw. He's going to keep throwing stuff. I'll I'll, I'll just leave. 15 plus 217. A piece of furniture broken from the swirl above you flies down, smashes into your shoulder, uh, and does four points of damage as you dodge out of the way. Clearly, he was aiming for your head. Yeah. He, He says, you attack me with corrupted chaos magic so that I can't defend. And now this? You use that magic to bar me from my home. And you come here to what? To gloat? I will kill you, Fitzroy. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, first of all, we're going to come back to the corrupted chaos magic thing because I need some some gaps that need to be filled in there. As for the other thing, I think we did know that that was going to happen, but Gray, I'll be honest, I did not even think about the side effect that you would not be able to go home to hell. The good news is you're here in the, you know, the material world, and we got lots of good stuff up here, baby. We got, um, we, uh, we got, what, what do we got? We got, like, we got crepes. Uh, we got music, music, mm. poetry. All three of you make dexterity saving throws. <laughs> I did not think that would be a <laughs> particularly persuasive argument. Now we're talking five plus two, seven. I, I got seven plus two, nine. I got 14 plus, I believe my dexterity is off the, is eight. So that's a 22. 
Okay, so uh, Fearbulg and Fitzroy, uh, rubble that has broken off of the walls slams into you, knocking you to your feet for 11 damage. Okay. You, Argo, are able to dodge out of the way, just barely taking zero points of damage as the chair smashes where you were just standing. How dare you come in here and gloat and make flippant jokes! I will kill the three of you, and then I will bring you back, and I will kill you again and again and again! I... Notice your rage has extended beyond Fitzroy. Sort of a splash damage effect. Splash effect. effect. Um, can you do me a favor, Gray? I know you're pretty peeved right now, but I imagine your grasp of the arcane is fairly strong. Take a real good long look at me. And Gray walks over and says, much obliged, and picks you up and brings you face to face with him so that you are dangling in the air now and you can feel his hot breath on your face as he pulls you close and snarls. And just as it seems like he is about to snap your face with his pointed fangs, he stops and stares at you Yep, and looks closer and pulls you close and says, what, what, where is the chaos? Um, I'm going to answer that, but first I need a no more throwing detritus guarantee from you, because the last one actually hurt quite badly. Um, so can we talk or? You have two minutes. That's not very long. Uh, Okay. I don't have it anymore. I don't have the chaos powers. So whatever visions you had of me being the, you know, sacred chosen one who would battle against you in glorious warfare, you can pretty much banish that thought right away. Um, Then how did you block me from my home? What ritual, what spell, what powerful god have you partnered with? Oh, none. None of those things. Um, (sighs) Wow. Can you hold this for me? And I hold out the ring of truth. And it's not its not a trap or anything. It's just a, it's a truth ring. And I want you to know that I'm not lying or coming at you with any amount of deception at all. Because I really, really need you to hear what I'm saying, Gray. If this is a trap, it's I nice. will kill anyone who's ever brought you a moment of joy. He actually told you it wasn't a trap, so it cannot be a trap, or that is entrapment. Fearbog, is it a trap? It is not a trap. Okay, he puts on the ring. Okay. Um, you're a pawn. But don't take that so bad because, like, we we all are. And by we, I mean basically every living person. Chaos is a, an entity with a will of its own. And it wanted to basically mess up the whole world via a war between the two of us. This is the part that is particularly important for you, Gray. And I really need you to hear this and know I am not lying. You are going to lose. I don't know how. I don't know what deus ex machina we're going to tap into to thwart you. Maybe a magical, I don't know, blessed arrow that has been dipped in the waters of the highest. Like, I don't know. But you're going to lose. And the world will be fractured, but it will rebuild itself into something new. Just to clarify. Yep. You think I am going to lose because of some masterful strategy you have? Oh, no. Or you know I'm going to lose? Uh, But if you could see my intelligence sort of rating, by which I mean, I guess my grades, you would know that I, a master strategist, I am not. You're going to lose because that's part of the plan. Not my plan. The plan of the actual embodiment of chaos and order. So those are the... that's that's the path we're on right now. And we don't want to be on that path. And we're assuming that you now super don't want to be on that path. Do you follow me so far? Yes. So if 
according to what you're saying, if this war goes forward, I will lose. You will lose and hell will be the dominion of the winners, which I guess is us. You I lose don't know everything. what I would do with hell. I don't know what I'd do with hell either. We could turn it into a pretty badass rec room or something. In- income property. So if I wanted to avoid that fate, all I have to do is kill you now. Damn it. I didn't think about that, Gray. I'll be straight with you. But if you do that, you're never going home. Explain. I mean, who do you think uh, allowed the, the barrier between our worlds to be pierced? I think you're, I take your silence as a sort of slow uh, coming to grips with the truth of the matter. Why would chaos and order lock me from my home? How does that benefit the war they desire? I'm going to be straight with you. I don't think they care about you at all. So wh- where you end up, whether you live or die, it's not necessarily the most important thing to them. I'm sure that you were an afterthought when they when they patched up the hole, so to speak. The players are getting played, my friend. Yep, mm. what he said. I the, actually the players playing the players are getting. That's confusing. I am going to destroy them. And well. You and everyone who gets in my way, this will not stand. I would caution you, Gray. This is a plan that has been constructed for trapping you and us. Specifically, they have the advantage of infinite intelligence and time. The only way you are going to change this now is to be very, very smart. The one thing they want from you. The fun thing is chaos. Master Fearbolg, I am a prince of hell. I control three planes. I have an army of demons and monsters and fiends. Do you think I need advice from a child? I am a fearbolg working on a minor in accounting. <laughs> we can all change our stripes. And he turns in a rage and continues to demolish the room, smashing desks and chairs and bookshelves. But the one thing he is not attacking, notably, is the three of you, which seems like progress. A victory, yeah. <laughs> yeah, to I win. Think, I think we beat the final boss. And after, let's say, far longer than it should have taken for him to expend a bit of his energy, he turns huffing and says, So, why come to me? You have friends, you have powerful allies, and I think more than anyone on this plane of existence, you have no reason to come to me. I want you dead. 